Guys, I've already posted a pretty long video showing like more than 20 tips and tricks for the Pixel Fold, but as soon as I posted that, I was already thinking of other things I should have added in the video. So today, we're going to do another one. So here are a whole bunch more tips and tricks for the Pixel Fold. So let's start things off with one of my favorite new features brought to the Pixel device's cinematic wallpapers. It's going to be kind of difficult for me to show you this on camera, but perhaps if I lock the device and then unlock it, watch my wallpaper. Notice how it kind of zooms in and this flower moves independently to the background behind it. And if I move the device around, again, this is going to be very, very hard to, to see on screen, but they're moving separately. So the foreground and the background are decoupled. You get this sort of parallax effect. It's really, really cool. I think it looks really nice. Here's how you do it. So on your home screen, press and hold, touch wallpaper and style, go ahead and click on change wallpaper, and then you're gonna need to find a wallpaper from your Google Photos account, whatever you might be using, save it into Google Photos, whatever, just pick a photo. And you wanna go with something that has a clear foreground and a clear background. We're gonna go with this picture of Rose acting quite silly. And you should see this little star icon up here in the corner, you can click on that and do create a cinematic wallpaper. And it's gonna take a moment to sort of use this AI magic to create this really cool cinematic wallpaper effect. And you can see now how it's kind of zoomed in a little bit. So again, they're kind of pulling Rose's face forward and things are moving around in this cool way. This might not be the best pick for a wallpaper, but at any rate, you can kind of see what I'm, what I'm talking about here. It works really well and that it's intelligent enough that when I'm on the cover display, it sort of shifts things over and it winds up typically looking quite good on either display. I really, really enjoy this feature. Let's take a second and talk about multitasking a bit more because there's a couple of things in there that I did not cover the first time around. So the first thing I did not cover the first time around is the fact that you can split screen on the cover display. You don't have all of the same options, right? You don't have the little split screen button popping up there, but you can still do it. So let's open up YouTube and let's swipe up and hold, touch the icon and then click on split screen. And then from there, you can pick any of these open apps to go into your split screen. And that is doing something quite strange. Try that with, with another app. <laughs> there you go, you can see that that is working. Another cool thing you can do on either screen is that little line in between that lets you kind of resize things, you can double click that and it will switch sides. So if I open this up onto the bigger display, you'll see that when I double click this, it's gonna switch sides very, very quickly. It's a really nice, fast way to sort of change what you're doing. Another really cool feature that I think they've basically pulled directly from Surface Duo to some degree is this screenshot button down here. So if you ever wanted to take a screenshot of a particular application, let's just open up Twitter, and we'll swipe up and hold. You want to get a screenshot of that, you can just tap that button there and it's going to take a screenshot of that app. You can then hit your edit button, go in and crop things, do whatever you need to do to save that screenshot all right there. You don't have to hold power and volume down, anything like that. You can simply do that from the recent apps screen. Really, really useful. And speaking of Twitter, you may notice how it doesn't really fill all the screen properly because this does not have a proper tablet interface. So what you can do to kind of make this a bit better is rotate your device. And if you do that, many devices will now basically look exactly like they do on the Z Fold because it's the same size screen as the Z Fold. So there's no tablet layout, but rotated this way, it's probably gonna fill the screen a little bit better. Speaking of the Z Fold 4, it has a taskbar that is permanently available down at the bottom, not this sort of transient version. Perhaps you want a more permanent version. Well, there is something you can do. There are some small sacrifices to be made, but it is still something that you can do. Go into your settings, go into system, gestures, and then look for system navigation. And if you change this to the three button navigation, you will see that you now have a permanent taskbar down there at the bottom. Navigation button's down here at the side. And again, like I said, these will just live down there at the bottom. Now that might be useful to you. You might, maybe you just like the buttons in general. At any rate, that kind of makes it more similar to the Z Fold 4. Something else I noticed in my testing was that night mode just wasn't performing as well as I would have hoped that it would have, but there's a setting that you can change. When you open up your camera and night mode is enabled, you should see down here in the corner where it says five seconds, you can actually change the time that it's going to be doing its night mode. By default, they're sort of targeting speed over quality. 
But I would suggest moving this thing up to maximum because it's going to make a significant difference in your night mode photography. So in my last video, I talked about the G board and the fact that with its voice typing on the Pixel Fold, you're gonna get some additional features. It's gonna be faster. All that stuff is very cool. But there's one thing I would suggest to you, you should probably just turn off. Let's open up a text field so I can get into my keyboard. Let's tap our little uh, four buttons there, whatever you wanna call that. Let's go into settings. Now let's go down to text correction. And first off, turn off block offensive words because of course we want our offensive words. The next go into voice typing. Make sure faster voice typing is on, assistant voice typing is on, but turn off add punctuation. In my experience, it gets that stuff wrong almost every time. Basically, it's gonna try and pick out when there should be a period, a comma, so forth in your sentence, and it gets it wrong all the time. So just turn that off, and when you wanna put in a comma, just say comma, it's gonna work way better. Let's jump back into settings, go back into system, and back into gestures again, because there's several things here that I kinda of wanna go over. How about quick tap to start actions? What this is, is the ability to tap your phone on the back to do different things like take a screenshot, digital assistant, play pause, show your recent apps. You can even set it to a custom application and this does work pretty well. So let's do a toggle flashlight and we'll try this. Did not turn on my flashlight because I'm still in the menu, but we'll try it like that. Boom, there's my flashlight on. And boom, there it is off again. So that is a pretty cool feature that you can kind of customize and do what you want with. I might leave that on flashlight. You can actually change it to require stronger taps if it's happening on accident. You'll also see some other things like quickly open the camera by double tapping the power button, flip camera for selfie. So if you're in your camera, you do this sort of twisting gesture like that to switch to selfie mode. And that does work pretty well. Tap to check phone is a good one. So your screen is off. If you're not using the always on display, you can do that and it's going to wake up the screen. That can be useful. Flip to sh basically means phone's ringing, flip it over and it's gonna silence the phone call. And then press and hold power button for the digital assistant. You can turn that off if that does get annoying and you wanna be able to get to your power menu in another way other than just going into your notifications. And one last thing here, perhaps you're using a case that's covering kind of the edge of the screen and maybe causing your back gesture to be a bit harder to use. If you go into system navigation and hit this gear right there, you can increase the sensitivity of your back gesture to hopefully alleviate that a little bit. Here's another one that really got on my nerves. By default, your fingerprint scanner does not work all the time. You have to actually press it, click it, and then it becomes active. I like mine to be active all the time. So just a very light press is going to unlock the phone. Let me show you how to do that. So back in your settings, go to security and privacy, go down to device lock and then select face and fingerprint. We're gonna look then for fingerprint unlock and then scroll down to touch to unlock at any time. Toggle that on, way better. And you know what else can be way better is your battery life. This is one that has actually shocked me to some degree. In a couple of days worth of testing, I am getting like 10, 15% better battery life by disabling 5G. Now I know some people are gonna hear that and go, I'm not disabling 5G, I'm paying for it, so I'm going to use it. But this is what I would suggest that you do. Go to an area that you use your phone on your cellular data, go to fast.com and check your speed. And then back on your phone, go to Wi-Fi and internet, select your SIM, scroll down until you see preferred network type, change it to LTE and run that speed test again. See how big of a difference there is. Maybe even try driving it with LTE only for a day or so and tell me if you experience any noticeable difference at all. Your music's gonna stream the same, YouTube's gonna stream the same, navigation's gonna work the same. You probably don't need the 5G speeds in general. And the benefit of this is, like I said, I'm seeing 10, 15% better battery life. Yesterday, I unplugged my phone at 6 a.m., I got around seven hours of screen on time and over 15 hours of use. That is an improvement, and I think it is absolutely worth it because, again, I'm not, there's no, there's no detriment to doing this for me. All it's doing is improving my battery life. I get asked a lot on this device about postures, tent mode, things like that. Well, guess what? You have tent mode, you have laptop mode, so let's talk about postures real quick. And if I turn here and I put it into laptop mode, what will happen is that suddenly we have sort of no need for a stand or anything like that. We can have our, our video up here and the comments or another app down here, but you can also do tent mode. So let's go ahead and close the phone and you can see here the video is now playing on the cover display. You can open it up, and as long as you don't open it up super far, 
the video will continue to play and you can set it down just like this in tent mode. And now you can view your content at a relatively comfortable angle. Again, no stand, no kickstand needed. So I mentioned this one very briefly in my gaming test video, but I'll cover it here too. There is a sort of a game mode feature. So we're in a game now. This little button should pop out here. Now what you can see is my frame rate. Click on this little controller button and voila, there is the game dashboard, which will allow you to potentially optimize the game, achievements, leaderboards, stream on YouTube, screenshot button, recording button, do not disturb button, all that stuff can be added to this little side floating button, which can actually be moved around. It's like if it's in the way, you can kind of move it down here or up there, wherever you want to put it. That is very, very cool, potentially very useful. Another cool one is the ability to drag a notification onto your screen and jump straight into split screening just like that. So let's open up, let's just do Twitter again, and I've got a text message from my wife here. Let's long press on that, and you can drag it around, right? You can put it right there, boom, we're straight into split screening. Pretty cool. I think some people find this app drawer kind of hard to sort through because it's just one long list. It's alphabetical, but things move around and it's hard to just remember the position of things. So you're, you're saying the alphabet to yourself, basically looking for the next letter. But here's something you can do. If you touch this bar here, you can scroll through and quickly just jump to a particular letter and you'll actually see that applications are being highlighted as you move through things. It'll show you the first app of that letter. Pretty useful. I think one of the biggest frustrations for me of the Pixel Fold is how slow it actually charges. Last night, I think I found a way to improve that at least a little bit. I was sitting on my couch with about 25% battery left at about nine o'clock and I wanted to plug the thing in. So I plugged it in with a charging cable like this that shows the wattage. I'll plug it in here real quick and you can kind of see what's going on here. It'll show you the wattage going into the phone. You can see here, I'm mostly charged, so it's not gonna charge very fast. Most phones are like that. It has to be really low to charge at full speed, but 25%, it should be charging at full speed. And it was only charging at somewhere between 12 and 15 watts. It's supposed to charge at 30, but it never does. So I decided to run an experiment. I jumped into my settings. I went down to battery. I went down to adaptive preferences. I turned off adaptive charging. You can read what that says there yourself. I then rebooted and as soon as it came back up, I went from charging at 12, 13, maybe 15 watts to charging at 20, 21, 22 watts. Granted, we're still not getting to 30, but it's definitely charging faster than it was before. I cannot 100% confirm that this is going to work for everybody, but I'd say give it a try, see if you charge faster, and report back. And last but not least, we don't have a true secure folder like some Samsung devices do, but we do have something similar in Google Photos. If you go into Photos and then go into Utilities, you'll see Locked Folder. It's pretty simple to set this up. You're gonna use your fingerprint, and basically from there, you can move photos and videos into this locked folder, and the only way you can see them is by using your fingerprint. So there you go, guys. There is another 20-some-odd tips and tricks for the Google Pixel Fold. Hopefully by now, you've got a pretty darn good grasp on this device. Subscribe for more content just like this, and until next time, stay nerdy, my friend.